Huge news from Sword Art Online Alicization Liquor is straight from the early premiere event in Japan. Two modes were available in the event, the open world Ruled Village section where you can also play as Yuji, not just as Kirito mind you, and a special duel mode where you are pitted against Yuji Synthesis 32. Hey everyone, it's me GamerTurk, the most reliable source of Sword Art Online information coming at you with new Alicization Licorice info. Before we begin, remember that you can get Sword Art Online novels, manga, games through the Amazon and book depository links down below and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the most recent news on Sword Art Online. Now, Sword Art Online Beaters Cafe held their private early premiere event featuring a playable demo of Alicization Licorice. We weren't really expecting to get much from this private event, but luckily, Senritsu Type O on Twitter has been gracious enough to share all the information he could from the event and we translated all of it on SAO Wikia. Huge thanks to Gishimenas for his amazing efforts in doing so. Keep in mind that there is going to be some interpretations based on some visuals as well, and I'll make it clear when I'm speculating stuff. Beginning with the lighter news though, because it sure would be nice if you stuck around for the major news bits. The picture you see shows up on the pause menu of the early demo and you can see the Wrath logo in its full glory along with the initials of Artificial Labile Intelligence Cybernated Existence, spelling out Alice just like we have seen in the anime. Now this screen may just be a placeholder for the early demo but then again this may just be the first Sword Art Online game that is gonna feature a pause mechanic and the implications are huge. The SAO games did their best to emulate an MMORPG so far for years, thus not allowing you to pause the game, but rather bring up an overlay while the world kept going in real time. But if we are having a fully obstructive menu like this, it highly suggests that this may indeed be a full pause and this may have some real world implications. Instead of playing in the environment as Kirito, this may just be a scenario like Assassin's Creed, where yes, you are technically playing the characters in the world, but on the grand scheme of things, this may be the visual transmitted to the Wrath staff to observe the world. But with the fluff out of the way, the main meat of the news. Two modes were available in the preview demo. One mode was the actual game itself, letting you roam in and around of Rulid Village, grabbing quests and exploring around with Kirito and Yu-Gi-Oh! Yes, Yu-Gi-Oh! playable too, as I speculated long before when Bandai Namco West stated play as Kirito and I said, this is probably just a lack of information and other characters will be playable as well. And lo and behold, I was proven correct, you're welcome. This is not a Kirito only game and you will be able to play as Yu-Gi-Oh and possibly other characters. That is what has been confirmed so far, but do not be surprised if we're allowed to play as other other characters too. But we have more information on that really soon in this video, so stand by. The second mode featured in the demo was the Yu-Gi-Oh fight you have seen in the trailers, a one-on-one -on -one mode as Kirito against Yu-Gi-Oh Synthesis 32. But first, let's talk about the details of the open world mode that was available featuring Rulid. As mentioned, you can play as Kirito, but you can also play as Yu-Gi-Oh too should you choose. So this is confirmation that unlike the Hollow games, Elicization Licorice will allow you to play as other characters than just Kirito. The area is quite big, Senritsu stated that it was around 1 or 2 kilometers wide, if you can visualize that in your mind, but his screenshots speak for themselves too to provide a reference and yes, it does appear to be significantly big and keep in mind this is just Rulid and the immediate surroundings. He said he was not able to enter the End Mountains due to a story barrier, signifying that End Mountains are either a dungeon or another large instance. Probably a dungeon though, as we have seen Kirtan Yujo fighting Ugachi in the trailers. There is a climbing mechanic in the game as well, which is interesting. Senritsu climbed on top of the buildings to take some screenshots, I'm not sure if building climbing is just geometry exploit or not, but he mentions that you cannot enter the buildings themselves. He proceeded to climb some trees and cliffs to take some pictures though, so enjoy. Now I know some of you will mention that they have their academy outfits on and the Giga Cedar is still standing. I do believe this is really because this is not a story playthrough but rather an isolated dev slash press instance. They probably just launched players into the world and for the coolness factor of it they just gave the characters their academy outfits, so no story speculation is required here regarding Giga Cedar. Senritsu also came across a lot of interesting stuff in the open world, accessory icons, usable windmills etc. He couldn't interact with most of these and the Gameverse lead Futami wasn't allowed to talk much about it, but he speculated that we will be able to bake bread ourselves in the game. So off we go with the dating simulator, on comes the bake 
take to bread sim. Jokes aside though, we also have some news about bed scenes in a bit as I urged people to not jump the gun recently. Bed scenes may not be going away entirely, it's just that the concept may be changing a little. But stay tuned, so much info to go through and we are doing it one by one. In the open world there were also bunnies that you could quote unquote fight. The animals of course will probably be a big part of the journey to Centauria considering the peaceful nature of Underworld in general and these bunnies are a clear sign of that. There are also quote unquote monsters around and things get a little vague here which is quite different from the main series Underworld but it seems like they are making things a little bit more game-like for the game naturally. But again I don't think this makes much difference from an Underworld perspective per se. Things like, you know, dinosaurs were real in our world at a certain time for example, so we do consider them quote unquote real in a way. In Avatar Universe there are sky bisons and it is part of their reality there, thus real. It's not unlikely that Underworld, the Underworld residents, mind you, that already has concepts like orcs and minions to have other types of monsters as part of that specific reality, so let's not raise our pitchforks here, it's perfectly natural to have monsters around. Now another improvement compared to previous games is that the movement options are expanded upon. You can walk through shallow water and actually swim in deep water. In the demo apparently swimming was awfully slow but don't worry this is because the swimming mechanic is still in early development as stated by Futami and was just there to showcase the base concept to the testers. Apparently you could also climb a waterfall at the end mountains that according to Senritsu quote unquote would make your gyrados proud but this was apparently just a bug and would be fixed in the release version so you still need a water pokemon with the correct hm or i guess it's a tm now in the last generations to climb waterfalls in the open world there is also a dynamic weather now we do not know how extensive this will be but the game has a clock on the screen and the weather seamlessly changes from day to night during gameplay and vice versa, unlike Hollow Realization where it only changed once you switched map instances or went into buildings. Senritz also reported a weather icon on the UI, so again, while we do not know the extent of the dynamic weather features, and if you know this affects the world in a larger scale in terms of mechanics or not, that means there can be at least rainy weathers too, if not even snow or other conditions, which is incredibly exciting. But next up we got the 1v1 dual mode featuring Yu-Gi-Oh! Synthesis 32. Now this is once again an isolated press version, because apparently Alice does not intervene in the duel like we saw she did in the trailer, so this is literally just a demo for the you know fight mechanics, the duel mechanics. Senritsu mentions the difficulty setting was quite low, so it was a relatively easy fight, though he apparently still lost on the first try, but when he lost he also got some information out of it, so he was quite happy. Unlike the Hollow games that showed a very game-like, you know, game over before resetting, his defeat did not feature the usual game over splash screen. The screen just filled with black and white noise and that was the game over screen itself. It's very good attention to detail in terms of the story implication of Kirito's death midway, considering he is in a Kamato state and dying would literally be returning to that real life vegetable state there until he was launched back in with another account. So not having a game like game over screen was a great idea in my opinion. In context to battles though, there was a giant monster battle as well, but Senritsu mentions the battle mechanics were quite different. There were sword skills, but they acted differently than they did in previous games with specific roles. You can use sacred arts, but you need to charge elements first, and while charging you are vulnerable. But the game does have an aggro mechanic similar to other Hollow games as well, so utilizing this aggro mechanic with aggro skills, this can help you a lot if you prefer a sacred arts heavy fight style on your own, while your teammate grabs the aggro and deals with the boss nearby. There are two movement modes mind you, sword drawn which is your battle mode and sword sheathed which is your casual slash exploration mode. Keep in mind you can't use sacred arts apparently when you have your sword sheathed, so you need to be in battle state so to say to use the sacred arts. 
The UI appears complex with the amount of gauges and whatnot on the screen apparently and Senritsu complains that this may become an issue if the full release does not have a more comprehensive tutorial for the UI. There are a variety of skills too like hollow games to build up aggro, HP regen, attack up and the like as well as sword skills as you would expect from an SAO game. But that is from the battle stuff, now comes the relevant Q&A section like playable characters, bed scenes, equipment changing etc. If you're leaving now don't forget to smash that like button before you leave, but we are continuing with the Q&A section now. Are there bed scenes is the, of course the first question. Apparently not, but Senjutsu mentions that there quote unquote may or may not be rewards. Well, his note is incredibly vague here. As I mentioned earlier, it may just be that the concept of the bed scenes are changing in general. I can't imagine a non fan service SAO game, but given the more serious approach to licorice, fan service concepts may just be integrated more naturally, you know, rather than Kirito bridal carrying all characters onto a bed. At, at least that's what I understand based on that vague answer. Will Shinon and Asuna appear? Will there be real world sections? Now, this question was answered in half to avoid spoilers I guess, but they do mention the story will stick to Underworld from the looks of it. Can you play as other characters such as Alice, Ronia, Tiza? Yes, Alice has been confirmed as playable in the game, Futami even mentions that he would be killed if she wasn't. He has not confirmed or denied any other playable characters at the moment though, we will just have to wait and see. Now equipments, are we stuck with whatever story requires us to wear at that point? The answer appears to be no, you are allowed to change your equipments, not sure if the answer solely relates to post game free roam or actual entire story too since certain outfits, certain weapons do have story significance. Uh, but yeah, you can change your equipment, take that as a general vague answer. Quinella, why is she where- Do you want to get us into trouble, goddammit? Is there a stat allocation like Fatal Blood or do the stats simply go up as you level up on their own? Now apparently they will go up on their own as you level and there is no stat allocation like Fatal Bullet. Chances are the equipment system will work the same way in tandem too, having stats on them that contribute to your base. What about the status screen was a question, now they apparently did not showcase the status screen because this was a press demo and had to be limited in certain aspects to keep things under wraps either due to you know spoiler reasons or due to concepts not being fully implemented yet. Can we see panties? Uh, they even say panty shots may get them in trouble, I, I don't know what PlayStation has changed recently in their guidelines for this to be you know so big of a reaction just 4 months after the 4 new bed scenes were included into Fatal Bullet, like Jesus, pretty sure they'll find ways to circumvent this to be frank, swimsuits, transparent shorts, possibilities of fan service is simply endless. Now this is actually a great question, will you do the War of Underworld in an update or a sequel? The problem with this question is, Futami just ignored the question entirely, saying they have too many characters and a lot of integrity knights. Now, Dengeki Bunko already confirmed the game would cover the entire realization, including War of Underworld, but Futami's reaction here is very weird. Unless Dengeki was provided with false information, this may mean War of Underworld will land as an update later down the line, and such a chunky update I can't imagine being free. But such an assumption also shifts the discussion of the release date speculations a lot, if War of Underworld won't be in the vanilla game then that means the game won't have any issues launching before the anime ends from a business standpoint so again this is something that leads to way too much of a speculation or this may just be a joke question or a joke answer to hide spoilers etc combined with the next one of course. Can we have Asuna, Shinon and others with a limited edition purchase? <laughs> I. I don't even understand half the responses. Take it however you want, you see it on the screen. That's literally the translation we got. Will Ryos do his dive move in the game as well? Apparently this moment was not taken well quote unquote overseas. Which I have to ask, how did Japan take it really Futami-san? How did Japan take that scene? I genuinely think the last couple of questions here are mostly jokes at this point, so don't take them too seriously. Part of it is probably just hiding spoilers, part of it just not wanting to answer them. The last couple of questions are funky, so 
focus on the first couple of questions. But yeah, that's that's all from a huge news day. I really like the visuals of the game. You can see a lot is just hollow realization assets, but highly improved. The spider boss monster looks absolutely amazing with great textures on it, dynamic weather looks gorgeous and I am really excited for realization Licorice. If you're excited for the game too, smash that like button to show exactly that and remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the most recent news on Sword Art Online. We're so close to 25k subs so let's make that happen guys. Huge thanks to Senritsu for providing info, Gushimenas for translation, to you for watching and of course my patrons and YouTube members for supporting my channel. Until next time, stay cool.